it's all connected. 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 It's all Hey folks, howdy and welcome to the It's All Connected show with myself, Grimner, and the lovely Miss Circle over there in Denmark land. And oh, in Denmark is, land. Yeah, on this Monday, October 19, 2020. Oh, yes, that's, uh, it is the Monday, 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 we have Monday. Monday, the title of today's show, this episode 14 of It's All Connected, is The Prisons We Live In. Now, um, <laughs> mm-hmm. this being episode fourteen, I think this is this this is like I did seven shows before you joined, so now we're at this is the pivot point. Yeah, so. equal equal number now. You seven without mm-hmm. seven with, so yes. we're we're good, we're good there. Mm-hmm. So uh, howdy to the folks over here in the uh, Real Liberty Media chat. How y'all doing over there? Hopefully everybody's all right. Today on this in this corona world. <laughs> oh man. I know. It's I know. not a corona world. I well that's what you get to hear everywhere, you know. In this post corona world. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that makes me another um um point on the list of prisons we live in, right? Uh-huh. The fear one. <laughs> Uh, See, you reminded me with that corona. We have that one in here, don't we? Oh no, we don't have fear in here. Tons of fear. Man. I know, but that, but it's not, that's not one of the, the listed. No, I no, I added. Okay, well you'll have to say you'll have to tell me exactly what you got to say about it so I can add it. Okay, but I just added fear though, and then I added the food pollution and environment person, right? Oh, that's never ending, right? Yeah. <laughs> Food pollution, water pollution, air pollution, uh, yeah. ra- radio signal pollution, uh, uh, just light on. pollution, man. It, it They're changing on. all the light bulbs to these uh, LEDs, right? Yeah, yeah. You can't see stars or anything. It's just gonna fuck up everything. It's another pollution. Well, I, I don't know how much the LEDs add to that. I mean, the incandescents were no better. Hmm. Were they? That's not what I hear. That yeah, that's what I hear. Okay. That the LEDs are, are far more polluting when it comes to light pollution. I am no, I, I am not a science guy I, though. Yeah, I think anything that uh, fills the darkness with light would be light pollution. Yes. Uh, in in the situation, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, yes. in unwanted places. <laughs> no, because well, okay. Here's how I know. Because I like to watch. Um, uh, people who watch the stars, like astronomers, uh, amateur astronomers on YouTube, right? Right. right. They suit me. Okay. Um, first of all, they're geeky and dorks uh, who has like this little special interest and they know tons about it. Okay. And then they spend all their nights, you know, f- figuring out how to get to some point where there isn't too much pollution. And some of those or a lot of those are complaining about the the switch to LEDs. So I just figure, okay, these people know. <laughs> All right, I I don't right, right. I, I don't I can't really. I no, mean, no, me neither. It's it's not a basis to form an opinion on, I suppose. Yeah, but, but it uh, well, I think food pollution, environment, uh, prison is should be on the list, though. Sure, sure, that's a good that's yeah. a good. Uh, definitely. And, and I also added the uh, whole knowledge, which had a nice spin the last five years, three years or so, right, with the whole fake news thing. What? Say again? Well, there's the whole knowledge prison, right? All right. And then the last couple of years, or three or five years or so, everything had been about this fake news. Oh, well, I, I, right? I, I, yeah, I guess so, but I mean, I've been... Well, before I, that, everything was fake news, too. Yeah, I've been talking about but it, you, you know. you just knew it. I, I, came, I, I, came with a, I came up with that term, clap, I don't know how long ago, eight, nine, ten years ago. Uh, which clap is the corporate lame ass propaganda, which meant all of the the news that you're gonna see on television or in newspapers or on the quote big websites 
the the reliable websites, <laughs> which are all full of crap. Um, so I, I mean, it may have they 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 uh, the the fake news <laughs> people may have adopted the fake news term over the last few years in order to uh, you know go after other people that they disagree with that are also uh, yeah, part, they, part they of the collapse. Like- Exactly. They made, you know, the, the, they made that where you pointed propaganda, they made that into propaganda. So it's, it's just all tainted. It's all part of that whole knowledge prison. Yeah, it's a word, yeah. word. Just because we give it a word doesn't mean we can point it out. Or or as uh, Alex Jones, you know him, right? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> he uh, used to say, there's a war on for your mind. Um, yes. And, uh, yeah, he he was correct about that. You know, there ain't no doubt about that. Uh, whatever you no. whatever you think of Alex, he he did put out some good uh, information there. Yeah, he did. Yeah, you know, and he's still fun to watch the uh, Y two K ninety nine show. Y two K because he went nuts, man. <laughs> he just went nuts. Well, well, you know, he's a good example of part of that whole uh, knowledge person we live in, right? I guess so. Where the bars is like this idea of of truth. Like there's this golden truth out there that you can measure everything up against. Yeah. Like there is, you know, you work with data and I work with data, right? And people who work with data, they know that the state of unbiased doesn't exist. And we're not talking about data from Star Trek. No. (laughs) (laughs) Although, although it would be cool to have an Android. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> different no. topic. Yeah, uh, I would feel so horrible all the time. I would why? be like, uh, p- because I would be like Pinocchio's dad. I'd be going, "How can I find him a soul? How can I find him a soul, man? Well, he's he's like this half human being." Yeah, yeah. Well, at least yeah. you, at least you gave him a life, right? <laughs> you can call it that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. Doesn't the the hologram doctor end up being more um, of a person than Data does? Well, I, all, I, I think so because he does have emotions, which Data never had. Mm-hmm. So, so exactly. yeah, and and he got that uh, thing where he could wander around outside of all of the yeah. uh, holographic emitters. Yeah. So I, I, I mean, I guess so. Um, <laughs> Which is odd because he doesn't have a body, though, right? Right. Yeah. And, well, only in, in the prison of his own mind <laughs> does he have a body, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And, well, I did also add religion okay. to the list of prisons we live in. All right. Okay. Well, um, the prisons we live in. Well, uh, if you live with the belief in authority. You're living, you're, you've created a prison, an invisible prison that surrounds you, that controls you with, with your total acceptance. Uh, uh, you, you believe that these people uh, are, are the, the, the ones in charge, right? Um, yeah. And, and I guess with all of their weapons pointed at your head to shoot you uh, or cage you or do other bad things to you, uh, over any little infraction of what they say, which is difficult to get around because they say a lot of uh, contradictory things. So if you're trying to obey uh, whatever rule A, you're probably violating rule B somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the funny thing about some of these, or all of these prisons, right, which are the walless ones, right, the ones without walls? Right. It is that it, you don't really have to believe in them, Grimnir. It's just enough of your neighbors do. Right. And that's what it comes down to. Right? If, then if, they become very real. They do become very real because they will come and kill you over <laughs> nothing. <laughs> they will. Pretty much over nothing. Uh, yeah. And, and that's what it comes down to. And and then they'll say, oh, well, yeah, well, we didn't really mean to kill that person, but... You know, since we have these shiny badges here, we're we're okay. Yeah, we we well, have no we have no fault. 
No, no, we were kidnapping him and putting him in prison behind bars because, you know, he didn't pay his taxes. Well, it doesn't have to actually be anything, though. Um, no. And, no. you know, just, just if you walk across the street in a way they don't like, uh, <laughs> or, or if, if one of them, you know, one of them uh, tries to, uh, you know, stop you for no reason as you're as you're walking down the road or driving down the road uh and, and demands uh, you comply with whatever words are coming out of their mouths and you don't comply then they they'll kill you and sometimes they'll it's kill not... sometimes they'll kill you even if you do comply and that's not so far from that um I don't know the queen lady in um Alice Wonderland right Oh, the Queen of Hearts? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That seems insane when you were watching it as a kid, right? It did, sure. <laughs> but oh. I'm just saying. It's it's sort of like off with the head. Right. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. What did you do? Well, you you know, you broke one, either one of the written or one of the unwritten rules. Or you did something we haven't covered in a rule yet. <laughs> <laughs> rules? We don't need no stinking rules. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> See, that's it, one thing that pisses me off, though, in this world, and I really get pissed off about this, is the whole, you know, when did we def start defining what was legal? Huh? Uh, didn't, didn't it used to be like, these things are illegal, don't do this? Right, it used to be where... You do whatever you want, you know, you know, and then, then if somebody says, oh, well, that's illegal, then you might think about it. But now it's instead of saying, uh, I'm going to go do this, I'm going to say, well, not me, but other folks uh, are going to say, <laughs> <laughs> is this legal? Yeah, can I do this? Can, am I allowed to do whatever? Uh, Let me just Google if this is legal. Well, yeah, that, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when that just that just pisses me off. Whenever I see that shit about stuff being legal, it just pisses me off. Yeah. Because it's like, uh, who are you people to make shit legal? I mean. Yeah, you ask your flash. Flash says he asks you. He asks his wife, which is you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Can I do this, no. honey? Am I allowed no. to do this, honey? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's that's all. You're you're the only authority that he uh, listens to. He listens to me. Well, he must. Artist. He must, because he's always saying, really? "Let me ask my wife." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Will you do this for me, honey? No, <laughs> no, that's not it. No, he doesn't. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man! So, Grimnir, are you in your life weighted down by all the other people's expectations to you? Is that a person you live in? Expectations to me. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess to some degree, uh, you know. Uh, uh, I don't have it's not a lot of expectations. Uh, pretty much my expectations. Uh, surround around Real Liberty Media. Um, uh, that's 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 what people, I think, uh, I'm expected to do by people that I talk to on a daily basis. Um, Would you say that the lower you can get other people's expectations to you, the more free you are? Yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> So it's just like work towards people having really low expectations. Yeah, he don't know nothing. Yeah, we'll ask somebody else. <laughs> let's let let's, let's let him be. <laughs> He'll just mess it up anyhow. <laughs> yeah. So so out of all the prisons we listed up, and I'm sure there are more though. Okay. Well, uh, let me, let me we go had to yeah. Let me go through the list here. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, okay. First, it was. The prisons we live in, are we each other's um, prison guards? Uh, I guess the Karens will have to answer that one. Um, <laughs> why, why do some prisons not have walls? Are you comfortable in your chains? And have you escaped, this is the big one, the prison 
of your mind. Uh, that's, that's a very difficult one, yeah. So have you? Have you? I, I have. I, I, I do believe I, I have escaped the prison of my mind. I've, I, I am at peace with myself and the world around me, and I feel as one with the universe. Uh, it's all connected, you know. <laughs> so, so I, I think yes, I, I have I have escaped the uh, prison that they attempted to trap my mind in. That most people's minds are still trapped in, uh, which which is this belief in authority. Um, I think it, it comes back down to that, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean the. Uh, of course, as as you point out, and as others have pointed out to me, uh, ad nauseum, um, <laughs> whether you believe in their, their their authority or not, they still have it. Yeah, because you believe in it. You and everybody, all the others yeah. out there, they believe in it. So that gives the power to the authority, which if you quit believing in it and you say no, you guys don't have this authority over me, then then the, their authority will be broken, and and we can live yeah. freely. And you, but it seems like uh, people are always like looking for who's going to lead them, who's going to tell them what they can and can't do, and should be able to do, and what's right and what's wrong. Whether rather than using their own mind. Um, to to understand what life is about and what they're about and what they should that people know what's right from wrong or at least they should right mm. yeah yeah there is such a thing as as uh, I I know this you know uh, that this is a topic we real people usually don't agree with me on but um, there is such a thing as a moral like uh, a core of moral judgment that you were giving from nature, right? That's your inner, you know, your morals. Right. And right. then there are all the ethical systems around you that you have to navigate through, right? Yeah. Being like the fiscal ones and the monetary ones and all the other rules and, and systems of rules that you have to, you know, conduct your life through. And those will impact your inner core of morality, right? Right, but of course, what's immoral to you may not be immoral to me. No, exactly. Uh, so, uh, you know, morals, I guess. But people they... are very hung up about the ethical thing. You know, let's, you know, like ethics, but ethics are what's, it's what is outside of you, though. Well, uh, uh, de define define the uh, ethics as you're meaning it here. Well, um, ethics does mean, you know, the uh, custom or the the um, um, the rules we set up for each other in different contexts to um, judge moral or good or bad actions or right or wrong. Okay, well, I... Would you I, agree that you live in more than one ethical construct, though, right? Sure. All right, see, to me... But you only have your morality. Whatever you think is moral or not moral according to your um, values and, and your ideas, that's your morality, though, right? right? Which is highly subjective. Okay, well, tell me, tell me if you agree with this. As long as whatever you do does not cause harm to another person or another person's property, then it's okay. Yes, of course. Of course. Some people would widen that out to uh, as long as you're not har harming another living being. Uh, but then you get down into the whole thing of, uh, you know, is it ethical to eat a cow? Which, to me it is, but to, I guess, other folks it may not be. Well, I don't really care if it's ethical, though. I care if it's moral to me. Okay. Is I am it, the one living this life, so is, is it, it according to my morals? Is it, is it moral and, to And to me, to me, killing an animal would certainly come down to much more than just the act of killing an animal. Okay. There are tons of, of different reasons. You know, every day I live, I kill a human. I kill, I kill living beings. Sure. I mean, every time you wash your hands, you're killing germs, right? Sure. 
<laughs> I can't walk through the woods without stepping on something. Come on. No, 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 you couldn't. So that's just how it is. So it's all about how and what kind of energy of my morality doesn't, you know, I can't put that up in a black and white world, right? Life is death and death is life. That's pretty much how it is. Right. It goes around. I don't know. Now, I noticed on the uh, image uh, that you would sent me earlier, uh, or that you put into the uh, wire, um, <laughs> uh, one, of, one of the things up on that wall there, it said YOLO. Yeah. Which is you only YOLO. live once. You only live once. Which is wrong. It's because it's a picture that says um, burn prisons and hug cats. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know about the hugging Thank cat. Thank you, Rob. I don't know about the hugging the cats part. <laughs> That's the part. YOLO part. That's the YOLO part. <laughs> I don't know about the hugging cats part. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> okay, is there anything more YOLO than hugging a cat? Well, what's what's YOLO about that? Do you know how freaking dangerous cats are if you try to hug them? Well, some of them, I guess, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, cat, cats are cats are kind of schizophrenic. Yeah, they don't hug well, though. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, um, okay. You only live once. You don't agree with that. No, I, I don't agree with that. I mean, well, and I guess depending on your what you believe in, but um, I, I've uh, I've had many previous lives, as far as I know, and I'll have more. But are you sure you're living one now? Well, see, that's a whole different topic. Um, <laughs> 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 we we touched on that a little bit on Freakers, you know, um, about about the fact that this is probably, most likely, looks like uh, a simulation. So uh, am I sure I'm living one now? Uh, no. No, I'm not. <laughs> Okay, I can I can honestly without just not just not trying to be the devil's advocate, but I can honestly say I don't I, I there's nothing in me that points to multiple lives on this planet Earth. Okay, well, who said they have to be here on Earth? The, well, that's all I consider living because that's all I know. Right. Okay. Well. Well, I'm probably down to Earth when it comes to stuff like that. I'm I'm very open. I'm just saying there's nothing in this, you know, in my world that points to it. And I am pretty sure if I really look inside, and I've been through the whole let's take a spirit uh, travel and all that, mm -hmm. and I, I I have never lived before on this planet. I'm pretty sure. Have you, have this you, is my first time. Have, have you had any near-death experiences? No. Uh -huh. Not even close. Have you ever done LSD? I've, no. All right. That's my problem. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I, either one of those things, having a near-death experience or um, a proper LSD trip, um, I think you may alter your thinking that you only live once. Um, <laughs> because well, I'm, I, I'm, I, have, I'm okay. I have had the near-death, and I have seen beyond this life um and and i have had the uh whatever you want to call it spirit journey uh mm -hmm. uh with the psychedelics um and i've seen other things there so um yeah i'm 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 first i'm positive that there is uh, life beyond this life uh but also before this life and and <laughs> that I'm also sure that there's other uh, dimensions we can tap into. So. Oh, I'm I'm pretty sure there are other dimensions too. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think pretty darn sure. And define life. Well, life is what is actually you, not this bag of flesh and bones that you're in flesh. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and flesh, define, define brain. <laughs> a brain is just a just a piece of hardware. Define, define. The brain yeah. is just a piece of hardware that you use to process things so that you can understand and make understandable to others. 
<laughs> I I never said that uh, we only live once. I just said there's nothing that I know of or have experienced that point any other way. Okay. But I am also a very in the. I try to. Re, you see, this is how I see. There, there is only this one hour. We're doing this radio show right now, you and me. Yeah, this is a one hour life. Once this passed, it's passed. It's it's, it's, <laughs> it's not going to come back. Yeah, exactly. Next next hour, next Monday, it's not like a rerun. Well, are we doing it's it not again? In no, the way. it's different. It be in the way that in the way that we view time, um, it's this hour is not going to come back, but this hour's already happened and it'll happen, and it's always going to happen. If yeah, you... but I, I truly believe that you know it's just my human experience that everything is sequential, right? Yeah, yeah. That's just my comprehension. I know the world is not sequential. Right. I mean, it's it's it sure makes things easier. To view things on a linear timeline. Then... Well, that's because I'm a three-dimensional being. Right. I, I'm not a fourth-dimensional being. If I was a fourth-dimensional being, I would be living in the time space of the fourth dimension. I am not. I'm a third-dimensional being. So I can only live through the fourth dimension in a narrow line. I can only go through the fourth dimension in a line. So that's why I have to make it sequential. But it's not sequential, though. Right. It's well. It's just me. It's just yeah. I mean, it's the, it's the way that we travel through time in this linear manner uh, that makes it seem sequential. That's all we can do because we're three dimensional beings. So when you start talking about the fifth dimension and sixth dimension, is right. Which is like the fifth dimension is all outcomes of all timelines that ever could be and ever have been, right? I don't know. I, I haven't defined all the dimensions because I have difficulty wrapping my brain. <laughs> all right. Okay, well, if you kind of follow the system from one dimension, right, to two dimension, to three dimension, and then the four dimension where you collapse everything into a point again, because mm -hmm. that's all the third dimension can do, and then it becomes a line again. And then you start having the cube or everything that ever could be. Okay. But I'm still. I'm we're so limited, so we're never going to see it, though. Yeah. So all we got is this sequential right now, and I'm just going to say that wherever we are right now, whatever this bubble we have right now, mm -hmm. we're not going to repeat it next Monday. No, no, we're not. No. Because that's part of the uh, prison that we live in. <laughs> the, <laughs> the the the, the three-dimensional prison. We didn't yeah. add that one. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, so are we what what? Well, I thought Moose Girl pointed out from uh, Buckaroo Bonsai there. Wherever you go, there you are. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, and Rob, I saw the link to the David Ike and thank you very much cuz one of the things that of course when you start thinking about prison and mental prisons and system prisons and prison planet you end up with David Ike, right? Uh, well, not I mean, you know, of course he's into it, but <laughs> you don't necessarily need to wind up with David Icke. Okay, no, but it's kind of, you know, yeah. maybe you don't end up there, but you kind of go past him and you go, oh, yeah, David Icke. Uh, yeah. I hadn't gone to uh, Alex Jones in InfoWars. But... Okay, well, he he's he's not so esoteric. Uh, mm. <laughs> well, like, like David is, but... Uh, uh, yeah, 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 and you know they they both have their good and bad points or values or whatever. But uh, but none of but, but those two are definitely did not escape the prison of their minds. No, they I think I think I further I, into it. I, I think Ike is closer to escaping the prison than Alex, but uh, mm. uh, whichever you know. There's, so are we each other's prison guards, Grimnir? Are we well in um in this three D physical dimension with authority all around us, um and all these Karens out there? Um That's the world of no cre no imagination though. That, right? so in that in that sense we are each other's prison guards. 
Um, I mean, because if you're doing something and somebody else sees is wrong, they may report you to the authority. <laughs> so, uh, so is it your uh, are, are, is it your civic duty? To patrol your neighbors and correct and adjust their No, boundaries. no, that's a that's a way overstepping of your boundaries, I think. <laughs> that, that's okay. that's going way outside of what you should be doing. Just because you see somebody doing something that you don't like, unless they're, you know, harming somebody or or, or, or somebody's property, let them be. You you don't just take them aside and give them a friendly talk about Well, you, you might say, to... Hey, don't be doing that. That well, I don't like how you're doing that there. Or whatever, but uh, I, I mean, that, that's not necessarily a prison guard; more of a mother. <laughs> and they and your mothers, I guess, were kind of your prison guards growing up, right? Um, <laughs> your mothers and your fathers were your prison guards. Your teachers, the schools, those are all your prison guards. Uh, <laughs> and, and of course, they all bowed down to the greater authority of the state. Uh, the greater assumed oh, yeah. authority of the state. So, yeah. Mm. <laughs> so you don't correct people's behavior. No, no. I, I mean, if, if I saw somebody beating somebody up, mm. I'd probably go and intervene in that and and tell them to to knock it the hell off. And you know, maybe they've got a good reason for beating this person up. I don't know if I just see it and I walk up on it. Uh, but either way, there's a better way to handle this than violence. Because I <laughs> sort of see you like Bud Spencer. Who? You don't, Bud Spencer. Bud Spencer. No. I kind of see you like that guy, though. Who is he? Spen Bud Spencer and Terrence Hill. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know Those, okay. Well, he's he's a big. Dude, and he does these uh, bear slaps. Bear slaps? Yeah, flat-handed bear slaps where he just kind of go from behind his back and then just swings, <laughs> and people fly like fifteen meters. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, um, I'll I will say this. It was a compliment. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I will say I will say this. Never slap a bear. <laughs> slapping a bear is a bad idea <laughs> don't poke the bear don't slap the bear don't annoy the bear in any way <laughs> the bear. no because the bear will kick your ass <laughs> Ooh. Are, are you are you like known as the bear in your town is that like no kids go, no you're known as a nice guy right i'm not really known i, I i'm i'm unknown Oh. I don't want to be known. I, I avoid being known. You're an unknown known. <laughs> an unknown <laughs> known. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> then how are you going to be somebody's prison guard? I'm not. I, I have no desire to be anybody's prison guard. No. I'm not no. out there to tell you what's right and wrong. You, you figure that shit out on your own. Um. <laughs> yeah. Oh man! <laughs> I don't know. I I live in I live in a society where people kind of think it's you know we should be each other's prison guard. Yeah, yeah, you know, because I, I I forget who says it. Somebody here in the chat, but it's that old thing. I'm my brother's keeper, and no, I'm not my brother's keeper. My brother's his own freaking keeper. Uh, I'm not. I am not. I am not there to instruct my brother and in right and wrong and left and right, up and down. Uh, yeah. No, you're more the guy who sits in your chair and laughs when it goes wrong, right? Yeah, well, sometimes, <laughs> usually. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come over here, Frank. You're about to see that guy do something really stupid. <laughs> come sit down. <laughs> well, there, there, I, I follow this one uh, Twitter account, and, and it's uh, called Hold My Beer. <laughs> <laughs> sort of the same though, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you you know the saying, hold my beer while I do something really yeah. stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they, they put up little, you know, short videos of people doing idiotic things. <laughs> and so I watch those and I laugh, yeah. 
<laughs> so, so you are so okay. Let's go to number four then. All right. Which is, are you comfortable in your chains? Are you comfortable in your chains? I because I'm pretty sure we 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 agreed upon that we are living in a lot of prisons, right? Oh, tons, yeah. 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 Ah, let's see. There you go. Um, those who do not move, but do not do not notice. That's not the one I was looking for. Um, <laughs> there's, a, <laughs> there's another chains quote in there about uh, being comfortable in your chains. Um, but are you? I no. I no. I I don't really. No, I'm not. I don't like chains. I don't want to be chained. I I don't want to be restricted um, in other manners. Um, mm. So you're living in tolerance of it, then? And, unless, of course, it's a... Uh, well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a whole different thing, too. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I, 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 a long, you know, a long time ago, like 15 years or 20 years ago, I decided that, I, you know, um, I was going to accept the state of the world and uh, go about my life. Um, is that when you um, getting un- to be as comfortable uh, in it as I can be? Is that is that when you unpunked yourself? Well, as much as you can unpunk yourself once you've really been there, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. That's when I put on a mask <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. just you know decided that everything is just going to be easier if you just you know. Yeah, I mean, I worked I worked for um, various companies for for many years, and um, when I was working for them, I I guess I had my chains on in order to make a living, um, you know. So I would obey their their rules and and do the best I could, and and I was probably like uh, the prison guard of my other my fellow coworkers during those years um, because. You know, I, 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 if I, if I saw people, uh, you know, if if they weren't doing whatever their job, which would prevent me from doing my job, uh, uh, you know, I might, I might go yeah. over and, and say something to them and say, hey, you know, I need this stuff here, and you're over here, you're goofing off, you're not doing your work, you know, you come in late, you leave early, what the hell's wrong with you? Uh, because I was like, you know, I was there to provide a, a, a valuable service for whatever company. I was doing it, and if somebody there was preventing me from doing that by, by being a goof, uh, then then yeah. So I guess I had my chains there, but I broke free of those. <laughs> well, I mean, also you know, I fully accept that I live in a very violent society that's going to kill me or make it very horrible on me if I don't follow the rules. Yeah, they 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 will certainly try to. And I tried, I, I, you know, I lived some part of my very young life but in I, constant resistance to that. Yeah. And I figured out I kind of like having a, a warm house and a, yeah. a bath and, sure. a, you know, washing machine. and All the comforts, right. And I like that better than being in constant struggle with everything around me. So I just, and I couldn't live in tolerance. I tried that for a time, and it made me miserable to be, you know, to tolerate all that violence. Yeah. So I had to accept it. I had to just say, okay, you fully accept it. But and, and then you an, make yourself an accomplice in it. But but I, answer me this: Do you do things that, if the state knew that you were doing them, they would come down on you in a way that you wouldn't like? Uh, of course. Okay. Everybody does. All right, all right. I'm just asking because you know if you're, Everybody does. If you, you know, you you have your chains, but sometimes you put them away for a little while and do things. That... Yes, I am. I am still a living human, uh, creative and imaginative being, um, who likes to experiment in life. So I'm still that. All right. Which means asking a whole lot of questions. It does. It does. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to understand. Now, um, I was taught from home that rules are made. <laughs> if <laughs> this is really much, you know, my mom's way of looking at shit. Uh, if if um, if you don't understand the rule and you think it's stupid, then it's probably not made for you. <laughs> probably not, but I mean, yeah. there's a lot of really stupid rules. Uh, that that go on that they are uh, well not necessarily made for you they're made for everyone oh, everyone except for the people that make them of course um. <laughs> yeah every day I, I I climb through a hole in a fence to go over some train tracks in a spot where I know they don't want <laughs> it's not legal to cross the train right track. right. Uh, no. When they put up the new fence, I for a couple of days, I don't know why, I stopped going over the train tracks because, oh, now I've got to climb the fence and everything. And when my mom heard that, she got angry with me. <laughs> because she was like, do you know how to walk across train tracks without getting hit by a train? Yes. Then do you think those that, that fence is made for you? No. <laughs> that fence is made for people who don't know how to cross train tracks without getting hit by a train. <laughs> is that you? No. <laughs> uh, I would hope not. Well, there you go. <laughs> Let's go make a hole in the fence. Yeah, okay, Mom. Now, um, do, do you do you uh, remember a person called A-Girl? No. Okay, well, she's from, from the old broadcasting system that we used to have. Um, okay. any, anyway, she was, she's great. She used to do a, 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 some various shows. But one of the things she would talk about is the rule of paint. And uh, you you understand that as things like stop signs or, uh, you know, wh wh whatever, like uh, lines that you have to drive within. Uh, things that are painted either, you know, on a sign or on the ground or whatever. And you have to, people automatically follow the rule yeah. of paint. Yeah, um, which is it's like, it's like a, the invisible hand of of a sword ah, out there uh, yeah. uh, instructing you, and in, and people freak out if you're not following the rule of the paint. Rules <laughs> of paint. I, I, and I guess yeah. not, I guess now it extends to like uh, uh, you know in your grocery store they put these like lines on the floor that are six feet apart so that you don't you know. Get in Do you have to stand directly in between the two lines, I, or just you know, I don't know. I don't. I don't pay attention. I don't pay attention to them, so I don't care. Um, but I think that's. The, I, I think that's the thing. concept. Is that mm. is that you should. <laughs> you should. You should. You should. You should stand exactly. You know that. What was the uh, fifth element? Remember fifth element, the movie? Yeah. Bruce yeah. Willis. <laughs> yeah, and and and, the, and, the, and the whatever the guard or whoever he is comes knocking at the door, is, he's got to stand in the circle on the floor and put his hands up oh, on, yeah. on the wall, and he's mm. oh, I'm classified as a meat popsicle <laughs> or whatever. Oh yes, that's because they're not like the prisons with no walls, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's because the uh, life outside the prison is even worse than the life within it. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm telling you. I, I had an old friend, right? <laughs> yeah. He got caught in uh, Venezuela with heroin trying to cross the border, right? Right, right. He got sentenced seven years in a Venezuelan jungle prison as a Danish kid, right? Okay. At some point, all the gang members in this prison had, had gotten a lot of guns, and they're pretty much taking over the prison which doesn't make it very nice to be a, a little Danish kid there, right? Probably so what not. They did was, <laughs> what they did was they took all the um, stronger prisoners and they didn't search them. They let them keep all their guns and then they put them on a bus and they drove far into the jungle where there were no walls, right? Uh -huh. Outside the prison, right. far into the jungle, right? Right. And they dumped them there. Okay. No, there were no walls and no nothing. Yeah, all right. But because the jungle outside was so scary that they stayed in that clearing. And then they went back, you know, a couple of weeks later and picked up who had survived. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> That's pretty much how they dealt with it, right? But because everything outside them was even more uh, hostile. Nobody was running and trying to survive into those jungles. Okay. Okay. Well, I could see that in that situation, but uh, let's say there's a uh, uh, prison there in, in the state where you live um, versus being just out in the, amongst the people in the city, then then the prison's obviously worse, right? That, well, then you need walls, though, right? You need walls when whatever is outside the prison is nicer than whatever is in it. Yeah, yeah. So the reason why you don't need walls for this, uh, I'm going to say fiscal. I really don't. <laughs> it's, it's such a weird word, though. Uh, but uh, if we talk about, the, like, the fiscal prison, there are no walls in that. But well, that's because the world outside it where you, you don't have a house, you mm -hmm. don't have any property, you don't have plumbing, you don't have water, you don't have anything. You're pretty much just living on the land from day to day without anything. Right. That is more horrible than whatever this violent system is, is giving us. Okay. Because if it wasn't, then we would all leave it, right? So, all right. So, being that, okay, um, in at least some situations... Uh, the the world inside of the walled prison is wor is better than the world outside of the walled prison. How do you feel yeah. about the actual walled prisons? Well, then you feel them as a protection, don't you? No, no, I, not just in that situation. No, the walls. In, oh, yeah. But but in every situation, all the various prisons around the world yeah. that have people locked up for doing something the state didn't approve of. How do you feel about those prisons? Um, well, I, I'm going to go a different um, way with it, though. Okay. I'm going to say I don't think anybody has the right to put somebody else in a cage. Good. I don't think that's a right anybody has. I agree. And the reason why you can do that is only if you rely on violence to do it. Right. Well, that's and that's, that's, that's my answer. And and that's and that's the state. And I think that you posted a link about that, the monopoly on violence, which is what yeah. what defines a state. Uh, yeah. So so obviously within that principle that I don't believe anybody has the right to put another human being behind bars, yeah, that means I don't believe in prisons, do I? <laughs> yes, exactly. So yeah. a fortress could be a good thing where, where instead of a prison because the fortress will keep the, the bad stuff outside of the fortress. Yeah, yeah. You know, like Trump's wall, right? I, we sat here, we sat here for years and listened to Gubasilla talk about Trump's wall. Trump's and the, wall, total uh, joke, total joke. What was that? Hundred millions who are going to overrun the the U.S. Ah, uh, yes, whatever. I, yeah, I, don't even, <laughs> I don't even know what happened. All that crap. You know, they they were talking about all these people coming up from Central America and invading the U.S. and and they're running the other way now. Fuck it, that COVID shit. Yeah, it never happened. It never happened, no, and that and that wall, that wall is stupid. I mean, oh, we built forty yards of wall. Okay, well, I'm going to walk forty-one yards and go right around it. How about that? <laughs> you know that whole. You know, remember when the big immigrant here comes to foreigners uh, to Europe? Yeah. You know, we had that wave, and oh, the world is going to end. You know, one year later, Denmark had to shut down all their. Um, Tent camps and uh, refugee camps. Yeah. Because they were empty. Nobody oh, came. yeah. Who the hell wants to live in those? Nobody came. Yeah. All those big, all those big groups of of single, violent, uh, terrorist Arab men that were going to come and rape and kill us all. Yeah. They never came. No. The the ones that came were the families with children. Because we would never put those in tent camps. Those get houses, right? I guess. I, get, in I Denmark, no, if you come with children, you get a house. I got, I got no problem putting families in a tent. 
<laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, look, you came here. You want to stay someplace. Here's a tent. If you don't want it, live outside. <laughs> well, we're decent people, Grimmier. We're not savage. Well, I, I, I know, but <laughs> you, you don't have to, you know, bend, bend over backwards to help somebody that just came and invaded your home. No. No. But none of this, all this happened. None of those big hordes of people came. And just like that, with the whole fear back then, we were you, we were, and you were, and everybody were building walls and fences, right? We're building yeah. prison. Yeah. Well, you know, those walls work both ways. Sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, I don't think I have escaped the prison of my mind, though. Okay. I'm trying. I'm trying. All right. Well, I, I would suggest... LSD, LSD and a near-death experience. Well, I, I, I don't a suggest near-death. a near-death experience. <laughs> because, I mean, if you have a near-death experience, you have one. But I don't suggest going out and try. Don't do a flatliners thing. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, that's, that's a bad idea. <laughs> but, see, I am perfectly content living a, a calm life of reflection. I don't really need the big uh, woo-has. I'm good. Okay. So everything just be kind and, of small. And, you know, and, uh, through, through meditation, you can you could probably get close. Oh, yeah. I did a lot. You know, yeah. There's a lot of, let's just say, a lot of the layers of prison in my mind that I took on with meditation. Yeah. Yeah. You can break a lot of that down. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 you, you get that, that connected feeling. That connected feeling with every other atom in the universe. Yes. And uh, understand that uh, the limit, a lot of the limitations that we have as as humans, as physical beings here, uh, we put upon ourselves. Mm. Which is that that, because... that that prison of the mind thing. Yeah. But in, in, you know, and I know maybe, I don't, okay, I'm just going to put the word love on it, right? Okay, good, good word. Yeah, because truly, uh, in essence, it's all about creation. And uh, I don't see, I I, I kind of see love as the force behind the um, creation. Okay. So to me, love is more, it's like a, um, it's like a natural force. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and that works. Even, that works even here in this physical world. Uh, you know, when you create something, you do it because because you enjoy doing it, and you look at it after that, and it's it is a, a work of love, right? Yes. Whether it's and like, I will tell you the the key for me to be comfortable in my chains is through love, though. Okay, but why do you need the chains? Well, they're there. I don't need them, but they're there. I'm very, um, um, I'm very accepting about that they're there. I lived my life, um, as you, as your quote said, unless you tuck on your chains, you're not going to know they're there, right? Right. I did that a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, you know, I, you know, I really talked at those chains, man. Right? I, I would, I would have loved to have known you when you were a teen. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, this is wild girl, man. It would have been awesome. Well, pretty much up until my, you know, late twenties, I was talking at those chains and being an artist, though, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I kind of know that, you know, that they're there, and I chose to back off just a bit and make them loose and nice. And one of the things that helped me do that was love. Yeah. You know, to understand that there is more than just the physical world where all these chains exist, right? Sure, sure. And in in love, there are no chains, though. Right. Even even if the other ones still exist upon you. Yeah. Well, even that true love of that, you started to go through the love because I I had the years where I was just angry at the all the rest of the people in society, right, for doing this to me. Right. I was very angry at at you know everybody. Sure. 
because well, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> Come on. Why are you doing this to you? Why are, you know, why are we, <laughs> are we doing, stop it? But they didn't. So I, at some point, I, you know, you had to forgive everybody else too. Yeah. Especially the ones who want to put everybody in prison. Those I had a hard time forgiving those people. Yeah, I do too. I, you know, I, got, I, got, I, I, I <laughs> you, know, you, you go back to that. Oh, all right. What, 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 what was your words? Because um, you, you didn't want to say all cops are bastards. You called them people. No, I say all call all cops are people. Yeah. Well, bastards and they should are people. be held accountable as such. Aren't bastards people? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying, but, but you put them in a group, man. Then, then it's no longer Peter, Paul, and Mary, and and um, you know, say, Doris say, or whatever for, their names. For, are, for right? those of you listening and not privy to the information here, um, uh, 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 sarcastic. What about? Instead of all cops are bastards, all cops are are. Or she put in instead of ACAB. Uh, how about ACAP? And so I said, all cops are predators. <laughs> <laughs> you got to see, I pulled those chains too, Grimner, right? Because when I was a punk, everybody was wearing a cap, right? And I, I made my own badge, and I went, no, every, you know, all cops are people, and and I think once we take each and every with you know the individual once you're no longer just a cop but you're actually peter or paul or doris or whatever your name is and you are now accountable for the actions you did as a human being as a person in that uniform not as the uniform but you as a human being right. if we start help everybody accountable as human beings well that individual that, that would be good but of course i don't see that happening no, I do. Do you? <laughs> I do. Yeah. 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 Well, where do you see that happening at? I, I, I you know. No, no. I, I try to live my life like life like okay, that. Okay. 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 But because I met, I met full cops too. I, I met cops who said I can't be a cop no more because all they do is arrest people. Okay. Yeah. Leave, and you know? and that that's my thing. The only good cops are the ones that quit immediately. See, seeing the nonsense that. That that ha they have to admit to uh, or lie about uh, in, in their profession, or the ones that are yeah. just no longer around. Um, yeah. <laughs> those are the only. But if but if they're an active cop and and they're going along with the system, and regardless of what good things they may do as part of their job, allowing the rest to not to to be part of the the, the corrupt terrible terrible system, then they're not a good cop. So the yeah. only the only good cops are those that have been quit or that quit or have been fired or, or they're just no longer on this earth. I'm just saying that it doesn't matter as much if you're a good cop as if you're a good human being. It should True. Be. True. I just don't see cops as human beings. <laughs> but, <laughs> Maybe but, we should vote for the cops, though. But that, that's a whole you know, Every thing. week you, you put up everybody wants to be a cop for the next week and you vote on them. Yeah, yeah. those are the people who get to be cops for the next week. <laughs> okay, and we'll stop it there because we're out of time. Yeah. But uh, thanks to everybody for tuning in. It was an enslaving hour, Grimier. An enslaving hour. A, an, an imprisoned <laughs> hour. Um, <laughs> but uh, we'll be back again next Monday, hopefully, uh, with another episode of It's All Connected. Uh, tomorrow, uh, hopefully, we're going to have a uh, flash somebody at 3 p.m. Eastern in a perfect world. Hopefully. We'll see. You know, it's up to him, however that goes. And uh, check the schedule on com for all the rest of the shows coming up on RLM Radio throughout the week. And stay tuned to uh, reallibertymedia.com. You can't really stay tuned. Well, you can, you can stay tuned there, but... Keep check, check out reallibertymedia.com on a regular basis because there's always new posts going up and such and other cool stuff going on there. So, um... Yeah, we else? even have our own critics, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't live without them, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They're going to vote for it, though. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, thanks to all the chatters and uh, other folks out there listening on RLM Radio. 
And um, I guess that's all. Have a great rest of your Monday. Um, and uh, if you're me, stay away from people. If you're Cirque, go up and hug them. Uh, <laughs> Don't hug cats, though. Don't hug cats. Uh, that's, that's a bad idea. <laughs> all right. So uh, any, anyway, thank you all so much, uh, and we'll talk to you later. Right? right. Peace. Yeah. Peace.